Hi, I'm Axel, sailor, peddler and boat builder, and this video tells the story about the design of the Artemis sailing canoe. It is a 50-50 sailing canoe because it sails as well as it paddles. Artemis is a decked expedition canoe which you can paddle as a solo or as a team of two. Keen and experienced skippers have used historic sailing canoes for adventurous voyages. They have chosen these boats because of their versatility and impressive number of compelling advantages, features just as exciting now as they had been 150 years ago, when the sailing canoe was invented and served as a vector to introduce and promote canoeing and, later, kayaking in Europe. The boats were useful for paddling as well as sailing, camping in the hull, had the ability to store some gear, food and water, as well as rig and sails in the boat, and had excellent sea-keeping attitude in a swell. Transferring that into our modern world, the suitability of the whole concept is severely compromised when the canoe gets so heavy that it cannot be loaded on a roof rack without assistance. And if it does not plane easily, the fun factor is lost. Boat design is a lonesome experience, so anybody willing to listen to the iterative development cycles which are aptly named Design Spiral is welcome. It was a stretch of luck that I found Brian Pearson, aka K. Haven Potterer, on the net, an extraordinary retired sailor with bad health but vast historical knowledge, sharing ideas, coaching and carrying me along with his enthusiasm that I name him as a co-developer here. To develop a light boat, just leave out anything that is superfluous. The good news is that the chines of stitch and glue boats are highly rigid, that is, if the planks are assembled with sufficient angle. Sailing forces can be much higher than paddling forces. Think the mast, the leeboard and you, hiking on the side deck, all are part of a crazy parallelogram of forces, trying to push the boat out of shape. A sharpie hull might be the easiest solution here, with ample form stability and a big flat footprint for planing. Brian nodded approval, while I wailed at the aesthetics of the pig's trough, its oil canning tendencies and its atrocious behavior in a seaway. We eventually settled on a compromise and I built the first prototype. A skin-on frame deck needed too much stiffening and was abandoned in favor of a plywood deck. Designing small boats gets much more interesting when you tow ballasted models behind a spring balance at various speeds and look at resistance and wave patterns, rolling, pitching, yawing and squatting behavior. Assuming that wave making resistance has probably the highest influence on drag at cruising paddling speed, is it possible to reduce that by design? And what is the effect at planing speeds? This is the area where empirical research certainly adds cost and time into the development, but will give unique insight, translating into performance advantages and paying off in the long term. The sailing behavior of the first prototype was lively and responsive, but somewhat unexpected. It took some time to find out what was missing here. The boat went in planing mode so easily and without the fuss that is usually known as planing hump. It felt just like a smooth transition from displacement to planing, facilitated by some weight adjustment to aft. The sweet spot for solo paddling was at around 6.5 to 6.8 km per hour, exactly where I wanted to have it. Last, the clutter factor. Outriggers, rigs and sails, leeboards and rudders are commercially available as bolt-on solutions and tend to work in a fashion, but often do not act synergistically, just seem to compensate for a hull that was not designed with sailing in mind. Overall, most contraptions feel like driving with dragging parking brakes. Sailing components should be developed with a good understanding how they contribute to the whole concept 
interact with another and with in-use scenarios in mind using principles of human engineering to launch off a beach or dock to hoist and to lower rig and sails on the water to reef and most important to spend long hours on a chair that should be as adjustable as the one in your car we need solutions that are both unobtrusive highly functional and highly efficient we could talk a lot about going the design spiral downwards towards making things handier, simpler and better manageable. And here we are standing on the shoulders of giants, starting with John McGregor and Warrington Baden-Powell and ending with Hook Horton and his bufflehead design, an exercise in human engineering combining decades of experience and modern building technology with deep historical knowledge. Yes, sure. I made her as beautiful as I could, because we all know that there is no excuse to build an ugly boat. And I have done what I could to create potential for a modern classic design that will be useful for some decades. We then evaluated different existing rig and sail options, tapping Brian's vast knowledge of commercially available solutions. No need to reinvent the wheel here. Each one with a different focus, the high-performance carbon bufflehead rig, the Solway Dory Bermuden, which is so easy to reef around the mast, and the cheap McGregor Lugger with wooden poles. A second prototype was built and worked like a charm, so I only had to draw plans and make a number of kits. The next development step was quite unexpected, as luck often is. Course Vinips, a Dutch ex-foiling moth sailor, built a hull from one of my kits and then started to experiment with other leeboards, rudders and rigs. Course has enough balance to use the boat with a hiking plank and enough stamina to invent a competitive 50 km raid on the Lauersmeer, then taking part himself to validate his concept of adventure cruising against other boats and crews. He pushed the boat harder and was sailing faster than I ever expected anyone could do, thus extending the initial concept of an expedition cruiser to an adventure racer. With his hiking plank, he shifted top speed and daily distances into regions which I did initially not anticipate when designing the boat, which then stipulated me to sail my boat faster than I originally had in mind when designing it. All of that resulted in the Artemis design being notoriously competitive at small boat raids and regattas. It was at that time when Brian's health worsened, until his voice was silent forever. I had never met him directly, but it felt as if I had lost an invisible friend.